Oh my goodness, I went to the dollar store today and I saw something I was not expecting. This is an LED desk lamp for one dollar. And they had, they probably had a couple hundred there, uh, white and black. And that's just ridiculous. This cost me a dollar. So I figured, uh, well, let's just open it up and see what one dollar uh, can get you. So I have a power adapter. I have to assume that this is something where they were just overstocked and it probably would have cost money to throw the stock away. So they just gave it to the dollar store? I don't know. All right. So let's check out this power supply first. Output 13.2 volts at 280 milliamps. And it's a uh, Underwriters Laboratory listed. And that double square symbol means that it is a uh, double insulated wire, meaning a uh, what is that double insulated? What do you suppose they mean by that? Well, who knows? Oh, we should probably just plug it in real quick. Let's just uh, see. Yeah, bendy thingy. Uh, capacitive touch. That means that there will be probably a microcontroller of some sort involved in this. Plugged in. Hey, look at that. Different different levels of brightness. Cool. Uh, so it's, it's a capacitive touch, meaning uh, pulses of electricity being sent to this copper plane that's right here beneath this butt uh, area here. The, the circle is just uh, going to give you a direction of where to tap where that little piece of copper tape is underneath. And, and the, I believe it's, it's either when your finger comes close to that piece of copper, it acts like a capacitor and it, it alters the, the frequency at which the pulses uh, can be sent to the, uh, the copper tape. I think that's how it works. And when it detects the, the, the frequency changing beyond a certain threshold, it detects that as a finger, uh, a, a touch. But what that means is you need a, a microcontroller to uh, send control that uh, uh, sending the, the pulses of electricity to it as well as detecting the change in frequency um, so there'll be a microcontroller at least um, LEDs up top we can kind of see already here one two three four five six seven eight LEDs up there the base has a, a weight in it, I can feel, because it's got a good weight to it. Um, yeah, it looks like just going to be four screws, so let's go for the base first. I usually go to the dollar store maybe once a month just to see if they have anything interesting usually something of the electronical variety because if you uh if you want to start messing around with electronics and starting to get a feel for it the dollar store is a great place to buy cheap stuff tear it down break it apart see how it works and if you break it like this uh it's okay you're out a buck and you know you've learned hopefully something from your destructive teardown of whatever it is such as what i'm doing right now so there's the weight. The power jack can come out so we can put that to the side. And there is not much here. All right, so there's the power coming in from the uh, the power adapter. Um, we have a eight pin microcontroller there that has no markings on it whatsoever. So 
We don't know what kind of microcontroller it is. The PCB is heat staked and probably glued down to keep it in place. You can see there's a big copper plane here. That is probably the switch, the, the big copper pad I was talking about. Yep, that it is. What else do we have here? Okay, so we have a uh, positive and negative. Negative comes over here, positive comes over here. Positive also goes right up to the LEDs. So 13 volts is going directly to the LEDs. It returns through here, through this 5.1 ohm resistor into, what is that? You, can you read that? A2SHB? Um, I'm guessing that's going to be a, that's a transistor of some sort, probably a MOSFET that uh, when it gets turned on, it allows current to flow uh, from the LEDs and out to, out to ground. So that pin right here is probably the base. And it looks like it has a resistor, a 10K resistor, between the base and the, uh... Oh, this is like an N-channel. Or if it's an NPN, I don't think it's a MOSFET, right? So that would be the gate and, uh, what, the, the source? 10K, so this is probably an N-channel MOSFET would be my guess. And a 150-ohm resistor that snakes around to the microcontroller. So this uh, this 10K resistor pulls the, what I'm guessing is the gate to ground. And then this 150 ohm resistor, when the microcontroller sets that pin high, that sends more electricity to that pin than can be sent through to ground, keeping dragging this pin up to high, turning the MOSFET on, allowing electricity to flow to ground, turning the LEDs on. Because it has different... Uh, brightness levels uh, that would mean there's probably some uh, pulse width modulation going on meaning it's turning the lights on and off very very quickly and the amount they're on versus the amount of time that they're off for each uh, pulse called the duty cycle controls how bright those LEDs will be I didn't notice a flicker in the camera so the 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 frequency must be really, really high. Oh, uh, what do we have here? That, 78L05, that would be a 5-volt regulator. So it's taking the 13 volts coming in uh, through this 0-ohm resistor. That's just a, is that a 0-ohm or is that a 100-ohm? That looks like a 100-ohm resistor, 101, into here, and that's converting the 13 volts down to 5 volts, providing... Uh, actually, the middle pin's ground. The 5 volts would be coming out here. No. Yeah, the middle pin is ground. The 5 volts would be coming out here. Yeah, there's a couple capacitors across to ground, sure, to smooth it out. And that goes into pin 3 of that microcontroller, which is going to be power. So, pin 3 is power. Pin 6 is ground. We could probably figure out what microcontroller that is, because that's a somewhat non-standard uh, organization. Anyways, that's all that's down there. That is cool. This is definitely not what I was expecting. I was expecting just a big blob of epoxy. Uh, the manufacturing of the PCB of all of this definitely cost more than a dollar. Uh, I think that hints that this is... Uh, overstock situation and they're just trying to get rid of it rather than throw it away and having to probably pay money to throw it away by charging only a buck they're actually saving money i bet actually how long ago do we have any deep codes january 1st 2019 and this is what well, september the beginning of september 2019 so I don't know. I'd be curious what the story is behind this. Okay, so now we need to get into the top. And that looks like there's no screws, so it'll be clips. 
break out a spudger. And let's figure out how to get in. Oh, Alright. Come on. I need... I need some... You know, maybe this will work. I need something to sort of keep it pried open while I start going around. Because somewhere there's going to be a clip here that'll... There we go, there's one clip. There's another clip. Perfect! Yeah. There are the clips. And it doesn't look like there's going to be anything special up here. We have a big aluminum-backed PCB here. The aluminum is there to help dissipate the heat from the LEDs. So will there be anything other than the LEDs on this board? No! And you can see the reflection, the boundaries of the traces on the white... Uh, through the white solder mask here. So we have a G and a plus, so positive and ground. Positive comes up through here, through this LED, through this LED, through this LED, through this LED, and then it shoots back to ground. So four LEDs in series, and then another four LEDs in series. So two banks of four LEDs in parallel, which now explains why this is what? Let's not ask questions. 13.2 uh, volts. So figure a typical white LED has three volts forward voltage, meaning you need to have at least three volts across it for it to turn on. So three volts times four LEDs. 12 volts. So that would be... So why isn't this just a, a straight 12 volt? I don't know. A little headroom, maybe. Um, so what is controlling the current, then, through this? Because then we can figure that out. Um, oh! Oh, can you see that? Do you see how those LEDs have two little rectangular bumps inside them? That would mean that there are two LEDs inside each chip. I'm going to break out the multimeter real quick here. Put it on diode tester mode. Okay. And if I come here... And I don't know if you can see that, but I can see two distinct LEDs there. And it's got a forward voltage of about 2.5 volts. This multimeter I have. Let me zoom out and show you. This multimeter has a range option. I can use 15 volts, which should be enough to power all four of these. All eight of these. And it looks like it's saying 9 volts forward voltage for all of those LEDs. Hmm. It's probably because it's just barely turning the LEDs on. As the voltage increases, the forward voltage will increase too. Put that to the side. So, the question becomes... What kind of current is this drawing? Put this all back together later. We have... We can do some maths. We have 
13.2 volts coming in. 13.2 volts coming in across a... No, no, that's right, because it's going right out. comes back um, across this 5.1 ohm resistor. Uh, I believe there's a uh, there's a voltage drop through the transistor to ground. So let's say let's say three volts per LED, like I was talking about earlier. Twelve volts plus whatever the voltage drop is going to be across that transistor, which isn't going to be much. Um, let's just say let's ignore that because I'm not sure if there's a voltage drop across that transistor. Uh, calculator, calculator, my very old calculator. Okay, we have 13.2 volts minus uh, 12 volts forward voltage. It's going to give us 1.2 volts. And we have a 5.1 ohm resistor. So if we divide by 5.1... We get 235 milliamps, and this is rated for 280 milliamps. So how can we prove that? Um, I need I need a clamp meter. One moment. This is a neat little tool that I don't get to use often enough. It's a clamp meter, so you put one wire through here and turn it on and it will measure how much current is flowing through the wire without having to stick the multimeter in line it's pretty cool so put it on to oh, that's voltage i want amps i don't think we'll be going I'll put on the two amp mode I'll clip it around the white wire. If I clipped it around both wires, it wouldn't be able to measure it. Only one of the wires. I don't want to do this. Make it so you can see it. AC, we need to put this into DC mode. Zero it out. Plug it in. It is plugged in. And uh, is that a little bit of current flowing there? It might be, we might get a negative voltage here, uh, current. Just because of the orientation of the clamp, it's not a big deal. So that's just powering the, um, so that's what? One milliamp-ish, just to drive the uh, microcontroller there. Turn it on, that's full brightness. 270 milliamps. Second brightness, 130 milliamps. Looks like it cuts it in half. 30, 35 milliamps, and it's off. All right, so we can figure out figure out the uh, actual voltage now across those LEDs because now we have uh, voltage equals current times resistance. 5.1 is your resistance times 0.274 is your current. I've done that completely wrong. Oh, no, no. So it's saying 1.4 uh, volts after all the forward voltage, so 1.4 volts. It's a, uh, what was it, what did I say? Was that a 13.2 minus 1.4? I'm just doing this because I like to play with the calculator. So 11.8 volts dropping across those LEDs, four banks, or two, well, yeah, I guess technically four banks of four LEDs. 2.95 volts per LED for the forward voltage, so three volts right on the money. Beautiful, everything works. So I think that this is actually a pretty sweet setup. Actually, let's see what kind of heat, because this is full on right now. Is this going to be hot? Yes. Yes, it is. So for a dollar, this is exceptional value. 
And so I would strongly suggest if you need a desk lamp, or even if you don't, uh, go grab one real quick before they run out. I might actually go back and get a second one. This is not a sponsored video. This is genuine interest in a $1 LED lamp. Um, so what could you do with it? You could... I mean, you could replace the LEDs with something else. Like, I might do that. I might replace these LEDs with, like, ultraviolet LEDs, and then I'd have a little UV curing lamp, lamp for, like, a, a resin printing uh, stuff. Or make it, like, a, a red light... Replace it with red LEDs so you could have a, uh, like a nighttime reading lamp that doesn't mess with your eyes. Uh, but if you did that, if you changed it to red LEDs, you would need to come back in here and change, where are you? That 5.1 ohm resistor would need to be changed to something higher because the forward voltage of the red LEDs will be less. And if you don't change that, you'll have a lot more current driving through. And that would be uh, bad. Oh, that was one more. How many? How much current per LED? What do we have? Two hundred and seventy-five milliamps divided by um, well, four banks of four. So divide that by four. Sixty-eight milliamps for four. Divide by four again. 17 milliamps per LED. Yeah, that's about right. About 20. 20 milliamps is about the sweet spot for LEDs. All right, so that's it. That is your dollar store LED lamp. I'm going to put this back together carefully now because I'm going to use it.